Uh, I've got a card to read for the class, uh, to the class. Here comes Brian right now. Okay. Let's just, let's just wait for Brian and then we'll do this. But I got a card from Ruth Kahn. I want to read uh, that just to everyone. Good morning, Brian. Good morning. How are you doing? Hey, Brian, let, we're going to start right off the bat with uh, the scripture. You and Diana are reading this morning. If you, okay. if you would read to get us started on that, and then I want to read one card from uh, Ruth Khan. And Brian, I think you're first on there. If, yep. you'll, if you'll go, I'd, let's go ahead and start. All right. Matthew 1, 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. Thank you very much. Now, Diana, if you would read for us now, and good, good morning here. We're, we're, we're every Travis, and good morning, Laura. We're, we're, we're going to get started. We're going to get everybody to talk about themselves as they describe their, their first memories. So, Diana, if you'll read our next scripture, please. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was the governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good morning, Barbara and Don. So that was, I, I had us, Travis. and Travis, yes, sir. I had, I had us, I had us uh, read the scripture on this just so we could kind of set the tone. Yes, it's after Christmas, but, um, you guys are all part of our heavenly family. So we want to, um, to, you know, to kind of, pull this together. I want to read one from uh, Ruth Kahn, and then uh, we'll go around and do How Are We Doing and our favorite uh, Christmas memory. Uh, this is from Ruth. She says, many thanks for the long days that uh, you've been encouraging for the calls to say hello and just to inquire how I am. Uh, that's a blessing for each of you and for the class members who've called. Um, well, I know the Lord is caring for me. Uh, you know, uh, and you have been the voice, hands and feet of our Savior. Merry Christmas to you and your family in the Sunday school class, Ruth Kahn. So she appreciates it. She is, uh, this is this is early for Ruth, um, apparently. She, she sleeps late, but um, she has cashed in on us at later times. So <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll hear from her. And we have Carrie and, uh, and uh, who else is coming in right now? And Kelly, yeah, it's coming in. Okay, look, we're, Kelly and Carrie, we're going to do our how we're doing as well at, at the same time as we do our um, our Christmas memories, and we'll just go around. And I'm going to start off. Uh, let's start off with Jerry, if you would. How are you doing? And tell us your favorite Christmas memory, and then we'll go around. Okay, I am I am doing just fine. I had a, a lovely Zoom visit with my extended family, and that was my Christmas. My favorite memory. Okay, I have taken the liberty of writing something out. Some of my favorite memories have been the fun that I have enjoyed in choosing a book to give George Mason for Christmas. <laughs> Not necessarily a bestseller, but following the adage of the right book to the right person at the right time. Just a book that I think George would find of interest. A 
special memory has always been the first gift, Harvey Pinnock's The Little Green Book of Golf. It had just been published that year, and even though Stan and I were new to Wiltshire, I figured it was a good fit. Already a favorite memory has become the note of appreciation that I received from George for this year's gift. Long time coming, reclaiming, excuse me, reckoning with race in America by Michael Eric Dyson. And I did receive a lovely, lovely note. Wonderful. Very nice. Thank you, Jerry. I appreciate that. Diana, what about you? You're muted right now. <clears throat> Muting. Um, I think probably my favorite Christmas memories are that my mother, from when we were very young, because we got so wrapped up in looking at the gift catalog and making our list of toys that we wanted, um, <clears throat> in her effort to help us keep focused on the reason for the season, every week every Sunday night we would do a little family advent devotional together and so we would gather around the piano and she I don't know where she got the devotionals but we would I think it was from the upper room and she would read we would read the devotional and we would sing a hymn together and then we'd light you know the appropriate advent candles and I think you know there was as we got older, my sister and I would bicker about who got to light the candle, of course. But um, <laughs> anyway, it that's really special to me, just because it, it now it's not the the gifts or yeah, it's Santa Claus that you you remember some of that wonder. But I think the part that I value the most is those memories that we spent together around the Advent wreath, even if we were fighting. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's great. Thank you. Vicki, how about you? Well, she mentioned this is the reason for the season. This was, uh, I think you can see it. This pen was my mom's. And oh. sometimes I don't find it before Christmas. I've got to put it in a good place now. So Jesus is the reason for the season. I'm doing great. I got to be with my Oklahoma City kids. You know, I told you last week and before Sunday. And then uh, this week I spent time with my kids down the street and they had not been in my house in months. So that was really special. They came in and, you know, they stayed out of the kitchen while I, I did chocolate chip pancakes. Cause that's what everybody said, Oh, you want to do a casserole? And I said, Nope, they're picky and the kids will eat chocolate chip pancakes. So that's what I made, but we had a wonderful time. And then I went down Christmas morning early and watched them open their gifts and we got more gifts. And so it was, it was a really good Christmas. But, um, well, I have lots of favorite memories, and you know, I talk too much, so it's going to be hard to put it down into one or two things. As a child, we had, we didn't have a lot of money. We were out on a farm, and, and, uh, but, you know, we always had lots of food, and, and we had stockings, and one of the sweet things was I went to a little country school. It was like a two-room school with a pot-belly stove, you know, at, through fifth, almost the whole fifth grade, and uh, they would have a cakewalk and pie supper. Some of you have heard about that from long ago. And I'm not really that old, but that's the way we did it. And uh, <laughs> they would have, uh, people would auction, I mean, would bid on these pies and things. And then all the money went for a little gift that we could choose. And mine was a little tea set. And I've still got a little piece, one piece of it left. And I've got it in a little shadow box thing. And uh, so under the tree, we were still surprised because we didn't really know what we were getting, but we did. So uh, that was a lot of fun to, to get those things. And some special memories are that uh, 30 years ago today, I would have been in Jamaica because Terry and I got married uh, in December and I was teaching. So we couldn't leave until the school year, you know, the semester ended. So my kids went to their dad. The first, that was the first Christmas to be away from them. And his kids were with their mom and um, you know, we both had the stepkids and we went to Jamaica for our honeymoon on the 24th. So that was a fun Christmas. And then Jim and I got married on the 24th so that we had our 
for your anniversary this year, and of course, you know, the anniversary of his death. So I try to celebrate the good. I bought roses and tulips and put them on my table and, and just celebrated, you know, the good times because there were so many of those. So with in my whole life. So Christmas is just, I think it's special for everybody, but I think, you know, the lesson is you have to dwell on the positive and you have to, uh, if you don't find joy in what you have and you're doing at home is take little gifts to the neighbors because we all do that. And they're simple. They don't cost money. A lot of times we make little things. I made candles this year with uh, my um, frankincense oil and uh, gave those to my neighbors and, and wrote the, put the scripture in the Matthew where it talks about the kings, you know, bringing their gifts and everybody was just so, so happy with it. So I think, you know, giving is a really good way to celebrate if you're alone. I mean, for some of us that are alone, I think that's really important that we remember that it's really fun to, to give at, at Christmas time. So anyway, I feel really blessed. Thank you. Thank good, you very much. Good year. Yeah. Well, how about you and Ken? Um, we had a very nice Christmas. We'll have an, another one when my son and and his family get back from Colorado. So, um, um, but one of my childhood memories that really stands out is um, our family didn't have very much at all. And so we would... Uh, in southern New Jersey, we would go out into the woods to find a Christmas tree. And, um, you know, when I was younger, I didn't really realize um, how long it took us to find one. My poor father, we would, um, he would say, what about this tree? And we would say, no. <laughs> and we would have him walking through the woods looking for the first tree and finally we would find one and bring it home and um, decorate it and that's not that one a memory that's very warm to my heart thank you hey joyce how um did how are your how's lauren doing and how's your daughter doing uh, my daughter's doing fine. She's back to normal. And uh, Lauren's COVID test was negative. Yay. So we're Yay. very happy. Thank you for asking. Wonderful. Thanks for that memory as well. Bonnie, how about you and Robert? We're doing good. We had a nice, quiet Christmas. Spent the day visiting with, you know, the different family members, you know, by FaceTime. So it was nice. We connected with people. And... Um, as far as the memory goes, I guess I've, one of the fun ones was when our kids were grade school age, we made a, one trip up to Ohio for Christmas, where I'm from. And uh, it just so happened it, we had snow that year up there. And so they finally got to have snow for Christmas and they spent a lot of time sliding down the hills. And uh, the bad part was coming back home <laughs> it was ice. We had ice all the way from Ohio all the way through Kentucky. It took us hours oh, and all day to go <laughs> to go what? through it. So that, that was not good. But uh but it was a fun Christmas to, to have snow. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Jim and Kay, how about you? How are you doing? And what's your favorite Christmas memories? Doing well. One of the most memorable Christmases I think that we had. When we first got married, another couple uh, with us did the bus ministry in the projects, which was then in Little Mexico. And every Saturday we visited the families. And there was one particular family where the mother had some depression and so we were invited in, into the house. And it, I don't know if any of you ever went into any of the old projects, but they were kind of like concrete bunkers. Mm -hmm. They were um, very plain concrete floors and walls. And it was the most depressing place I'd ever been in. 
So the other, we got together with the other couple and we bought a rug and some curtains and we brought a Christmas tree and Christmas decorations and a big box of food on Christmas Eve. Wow. And I think to see that family was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. I still that's, remember it every year. Yes, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you. That uh, Kay, that that community now, of course, it doesn't little. You're talking about Little Mexico here in Dallas. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's now been just it's wiped gone. out by commercial. Yeah, it's gone. Businesses. It is sad. We used to go over there and shop for their chorizo yeah. in one of the little uh, stores that he had. I mean, there were little grocery stores and so on. We lined up with all locals every Saturday at the, at the Dallas Tortilla place. So can uh -huh. you get corn tortillas right off the, the belt? Yes. The children yes. who lived in those projects were not all Hispanic. If there were, it was a mixture uh, of of races. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. But it's sad. It's a, it's a wonderful memory, but it's kind of sad, though, to me, Kate, when the, it's just like that culture, that particular, I don't know what, just wiped out. Yeah. yeah. It, it, the people who lived there uh, had, had nothing. That's right. Well, thank you for doing that. That's a wonderful memory. Bert, okay, it is time for you to premiere your song. How are you and Diane doing first? And then um, can I give us a little background on the inspiration of your of your new, of your new uh, premiere here? Well, first of all, my favorite Christmas memory was this past Christmas. First of all, it was the first year that I can remember that I wasn't working on Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. So I got to, Diane and I had uh, Christmas Eve together and I don't remember when the last time I ever had Christmas Eve. Just like, you know, I work till one in the morning, most well, usually on that. And um, so that's my, that is been my favorite Christmas. Um, but the, the inspiration for the song was that um, there was quite a period in my life that was a dark time for me. And I was pretty much Bert the Grinch. I didn't really um, celebrate Christmas. Um, I was just, depressed and unhappy and going through some personal problems at the time. And when I met Diana, she is one of the most Christmas, Christmassy ladies I've ever met. <laughs> she loves Christmas. She loves giving the presents, of course, to her grandson. And, but she just loves the season so much. And it infected me. And I'm the much better for it. And so I just thought about it. And I thought about her and what has happened in my life. And I wrote this Christmas song for her and it's called Diana's Christmas Season. So if you all would like to hear it, I'd love to play it for you. Yes, yes. please. Yes. First of all, let me, let me, tell me if, if you can hear this. Yes, mm -hmm. you can hear it. Yeah. Okay.
It's a light that shines bright even in the still night. And when you're feeling alone, it's a light. Sorry, a <laughs> twinkle in her eyes like the stars in the sky. That sign of hope and joy. It's Diana's Christmas season. And it's here. And it's good for a reason. There is cheer in the air and feelings of care. Diana's season is here. Oh, it's fun just to watch and warm to see. When she puts all the presents under the tree. She wraps up the lot. And I think it's because she really, really, really thinks she's Mrs. Claus. <laughs> It's <laughs> Christmas season, and it's here, and it's good for a reason. There is cheer, cheer in the air, and feelings of care. Die. Randy Newman. <laughs> Very good. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Did she cry when she first heard it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Patty and I wrote a rap battle. Does anybody want to hear it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. No. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Laura, how about you? Only, only if it has scripture in it can you <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> that's great okay you said Laura yes uh, uh, we are doing well ourselves but his sister is very very sick mm -hmm. the one in, in uh, North Carolina that's where Ray grew up that's why he talks funny because <laughs> he grew up in North Carolina her name is Cornelia. She's uh, very, very sick. She is at home, though. It is COVID. Uh, and she's completely by herself. And then her good friend now is gone. And then my cousin's husband, Pete, who lives in Temple, he got, he's gotten a little better, but we really doubt that he's going to make it. Uh, it's not COVID. It's other. He's had many other problems. 
it's probably going to end it for him. So uh, we're, we're very concerned about that. Um, as far as my- Who was that? Who's the second person in Temple? How are they related to you? Uh, back at Peggy, my cousin Peggy's husband, Pete. Okay. They live in Temple. And uh, as far as my one of my one of my favorite Christmas uh, memories is my sister, older sister Judy, was four years ahead of me in school, and she went to Wayland. And when she, I was a senior in high school, she was a senior at Wayland, and she brought home with her a Japanese student so that that student could have somewhere to go for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And the student taught us how to make sukiyaki. And if you've ever seen the word, it looks like you would say sukiyaki, but you pronounce it sukiyaki. And it's, you know, it's made of beef and uh, tofu, onions, uh, shiitake mushrooms, and shiitake noodles. So when this came up, I had to learn how to go to an Asian grocery store and find those two things because you, nobody else has those two things. <laughs> and um, then Carol, my younger sister, adopted the two girls in 90 who in 94 and the other day the older one a andrea said now we've had this every single christmas haven't we and we said yes we do it every christmas and she said well you've got to send us the recipe you said you're the one who's always made it so we can make it and the younger one who just got married uh there in houston with his parents his family and then uh so actually the girls each made it and they each sent me a picture of it and said, it looks awful, but it tastes good. <laughs> and one of, one of them did look a lot better than the other one. But I'm sure they were really, really good. And uh, that's something that uh, we, uh, we always look forward to. And Ryan, I didn't do it this year, but uh, we'll, next year we'll start doing that again. Okay, that's a good memory. I like that. Travis and Patty, how are you doing? And what's your favorite memories? We're good. We're doing well. We are good. You, you want to start? Um, you know, as a child, my grandmother every year would make us a, a new stocking. So there was always a newly designed stocking at her house. And um, I don't think any of them survived, but that was always a big treat. Mm -hmm. And then with uh, Matthew, it was probably... Uh, well, food was very important with my family as a child on the holidays. We had certain special things. And so we did that with Matthew. Um, and I was kind of touched that before Thanksgiving, he texted me and he said, um, I need to call you to go over the Thanksgiving recipes. And so I thought, okay, I've sort of passed that on to him. He was going to have some very specific food on Thanksgiving. And then he also texted me and said, I'm cooking on Christmas Eve. So, um, you know, I think food is Obviously important to us. <laughs> what do you? What is yours? Mine, uh, Pat. This is Patty's and my thirtieth Christmas together. So we've got kind of a collective body of work uh, to look back on and and be thankful for. Um, my childhood memory, maybe the most vivid one. I've got a lot of good ones. I think everybody probably does. At least I hope they do. Um, but. I remember being six years old. My dad was in the Air Force. And so for various reasons, we had a pretty chaotic life early in my life. And uh, I remember coming back from um, Williams Air Force Base in Arizona. For, it was actually the day after Christmas. Um, but we were still sort of celebrating Christmas because we were on the road during Christmas. And we were in a hotel room. And, you know, they don't really furnish those with Christmas trees but they did have a potted plant that my mother turned into a Christmas tree. She was making the best of, of you know, a difficult Christmas. And, and uh, I remember that pretty fondly. Aww. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Carrie, how about you and Dave? We're doing well. Um, made it through Christmas and I'm, you know, we're still staying in except taking car rides around or something to get out of the house. But he does all the shopping and everything. But we're doing well health-wise. Mm -hmm. And I guess my favorite memory is I look back on it. We had a large family, extended family, growing up. Uh, my dad's sister and my dad's brother, who are obviously my aunt and uncle, 
lived in Dallas or Fort Worth. And so we always spent Christmas and usually Thanksgiving together. And they rotated whose house it would be at. But finally, it pretty well settled that it would be at my aunt's house in Dallas over in Oak Cliff because she was the matriarch. They lost their mother when my dad was 16. So she kind of stepped in and she was the oldest child. But, you know, I look back on that and I had cousins and I mean, there'd be 20 some odd people in the house like that, you know, and now, and I don't know, I guess some families still have these large families, but our two children that, you know, I've only got one grandchild, I've got two grandchildren and it's just not a big family like it was. So I look back on those memories fondly. Mm. I really do. Well, the big families. Really wish I had more. <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you. Brian, what about you? How are you doing? And what is your favorite Christmas memory? Well, um, I'm doing well. My younger brother and I drove down to spend Christmas with my brother and his family. They live on 37 acres of land north of Lampasas, mm -hmm. about 15 miles north. So just some really beautiful views. And my brother and I also like looking at new houses. Don't ask me why, but we do. <laughs> and from I-35, Belton, Colleen, Copper's Cove, Lampasas, all of that area is just booming. They're, mm -hmm. they're building, you know, enormous new housing developments all along there. And selling them as fast as they can put it put them up so that's all entertaining a lot of that is overflow from austin because austin mm -hmm. has gotten has gotten so expensive and those neighborhoods are generally one-story houses uh under 1800 square feet and under two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. so there's a there's a big demand for that still um favorite christmas memory would be 1959 uh, my dad was also in the Air Force, and the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs had just opened. We were one of the very first families to move there. The Academy itself is set in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, so you're you're literally right there where you can go out into the woods right, or go hiking right. or whatever. There's the Academy itself, and then there's two housing uh, areas called Douglas Valley and Pine Valley. And uh, the architecture style was all mid-century modern. The houses, it was a bad choice, it turns out, but they had almost flat roofs and yeah. carports, no garage. <laughs> that, that, that doesn't do too well. Yeah. Who could have uh, seen that coming? And the houses were all in clusters. So it would be like a circle with a you know a little grass lawn in the middle. And what I remember is, uh, so it would be a little bit before the 25th, 1959. And back in those days, it snowed a lot up there. I mean, a lot. And it would get down below zero. And I don't know why this one memory stuck in my mind, but it was uh, uh, standing with my mom, looking out the front door as the, the uh, post office, the mail truck pulled up. And, uh, and it was very hard to get the mail out because the roads were so bad. And he brought us a package from friends of my parents that uh, also in the Air Force that had moved to uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. And what they sent us was a, a package of Lincoln logs. Those were, yeah, those were, those were kind of a new thing back then. Uh -huh. So I don't know why, but, but that image sticks in my mind because to me, that's what Christmas is supposed to look like. It's supposed to be all snowy and hard to get around and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that kind of thing. That's great. That's great. Thank you very much. Don and Barbara, we're going to have to uh, have to get you to write your favorite Christmas memories on that one. I know you can't talk, but it was good to, good to see your names there and we hope you're doing well. Kelly, how about you? How are you doing, your family, and how, what your favorite Christmas memory? Uh, we had a good Christmas. It was fun. Um, everybody except uh, our son Will and his family could come. So it was a good gathering. And <clears throat> I guess one of my favorite Christmases was the one 35 years ago. Uh, today uh, was our wedding day. Oh. And our um, uh, at the church was still decorated for Christmas. So that made everything really pretty. But we still laugh to this day because typically my mother goes all out for Christmas. Just 
-hmm. we've all lost count of how many trees in the house and just it's it's always beautiful it's a huge deal to her and that year she did not put up one tree there was nothing she had a wedding to put together that's it it's just okay it's not happening (laughs) we still celebrated but there were no decorations (laughs) (laughs) that's great i like that Sandra, how are you doing, and what is your favorite Christmas memory? Well, let's see. They, I think Christmas was always fun. Uh, but one I remember that was kind of interesting, there was this big present, heavy, beautifully wrapped. It was my name on it under the tree. And I was so excited, and it turned out to be a set of encyclopedias. That <laughs> 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 was not... Uh, very fun for me, <laughs> and I still remember it. But we usually traveled. I lived in, I grew up in Springfield, Missouri, and we usually traveled to my grandparents' house in Harrison, Arkansas, which was a beautiful drive through the Ozarks. But back then, it seemed to me like we always had ice and snow, so I was petrified. But we always made it. But whenever you you go from Springfield to Harrison, back then you would go through uh, Branson, Missouri, and you could spit and hit everything in town. <laughs> and now you know what Branson is like. So I think that's kind of interesting. But we would arrive in Harrison, and my grandparents had this big uh, chow mix of a dog whom I adored. And the first thing that happened was I went out of the car and he would come bounding toward me and knock me down. And we were off to the races. So <laughs> that was just fun. We did that a lot. So. That's great. That is great. Dennis and Laura, you need to tell us your memories. Of we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll get into that in one of the stories. But, but Laura, you go first. You go first. Okay. I grew up in San Antonio and uh, my mom's and dad's families both lived there. And I had lots of cousins on both sides of the family and we would spend Christmas going from one house at lunch and then dinner at the next house. One and it was always an exhausting day. I loved it, but it was always an exhausting day. Well, one year, and I think I was about five years old, San Antonio had a huge flu outbreak. And uh, my mom and dad and I caught the flu. And neither family wanted us near them, which I totally understand. (laughs) And um, they brought food. They didn't, they knocked on the door. They dropped the food off at the door and they left. (laughs) And that Christmas was one of my favorite memories because I got to spend it with mom and dad. (laughs) And we stayed home. And I got to, I don't know if I played with anything or not, but I just remember that time of uh, being with them on a holiday. And so that memory just stands out in my mind as being one of my favorite holidays. And my favorite ones, um, I'm, I'm 10 and 13 years behind my siblings, my brother and sister, I was a mistake. But um, the, <laughs> so, when, so my sister, um, my brother went to junior college and Tyler, like I did. So he was around two more years. But after that, he, Sandy went to Baylor and, and which everybody in our family went to Baylor except my brother and I, we missed the exit. But, but they, <laughs> and I just was thought, man, my whole life has changed because they were, they, I did everything with my brother and sister. I didn't even know they had a name until, until I was like in the twenties or something. I was, it was brother and sister. But when they came home that Christmas from, from, from college, um, that was my best Christmas ever. That was a wonderful time to be with mm-hmm. them. It was great. Now, let me tell you what I'd like for us to do now. First of all, if you haven't seen today's sermon, you need to see it. Jillian Mason, or Jillian, I can't remember what her is, uh, is on. 
and they have moved to San Antonio. I didn't realize that. And she's in Perkins School of Theology. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you're going to want to hear Go Tell It on the Mountain that Jeff plays at the very end. It's just wonderful. And, uh, and of course, mm -hmm. Jenna did a great job. Jenna Sullivan did a great job preaching. Mm -hmm. But Laura and I were at Wilshire. Oh, we've got Robert Cohn coming in. Let's see what we got from Robert. Let's get Robert's story quickly. Robert, how are you doing? Robert, let's unmute you. <laughs> Robert, you're still muted. Um, let's, there we go. There you go. Robert, can you tell us how are you doing and what is one of your favorite Christmas memories? <clears throat> Robert, can you tell, how are you doing? And tell us one of your favorite memories. Something's wrong here. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> you can talk, Robert. We, we can hear, I think. He's not hearing you. This yeah. volume might be down. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's carry on with this one. Robert, it's good to see you. Hope you're having a Merry Christmas. Um, we were, Laura and I were, had just moved up. We were married in Austin and came from University of Baptist in Austin and uh, we went to Broadway and um, in, Fort Worth. in Fort Worth and John Claypool was the pastor then and mm -hmm. um, we were, they were having a Wednesday night discussion on women deacons and they came down to a vote and we thought, boy, what a backwards church. We'd had women deacons at UBC for years and you know, that's one of the three churches that we've been members of. They've been kicked out of the, you know, the, out of the Baptist General Commission. <laughs> at any rate, the, um, so they had this big vote. And I mean, we were people that we thought were friends, were, we thought they were at each other's throats. And the vote was mm -hmm. like 252 to 257 or something. I mean, it was just really close. And John, John Claypool thought, well, that's just too close to, to do anything. Well, the next Wednesday night, which was the, the agape meal which is the, the thanksgiving mm -hmm. the wednesday before thanksgiving these people that were at each other's throats kind of came back together um and they loved each other but john john wanted to read this story and it's from an it's a book called the way of the wolf it's from an episcopal priest um and it's uh in which john became an episcopal priest and it's a story about how we are all members of a heavenly family and that's what i think about you guys so laura's going to read this and um if you uh, if you if, 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 uh, i hope you enjoy it <laughs> this is from the way of the wolf the gospel and new images and the name of the story is barrington bunny and one sidestep on that one we had one member of our church who was named after this story keith barrington rayburn, rayburn. okay it was named after this story okay <laughs> Barrington Bunny. Once upon a time in a large forest, there lived a very furry bunny. He had one lop ear, a tiny black nose, and unusually shiny eyes. His name was Barrington. Barrington was not really a very handsome bunny. He was brown and speckled and his ears didn't stand upright. But he could hop, and he was, as I have said, furry furry. In a way, winter is fun for bunnies. After all, it gives them an opportunity to hop in the snow and then turn around to see where they have hopped. So, in a way, winter was fun for Barrington. But in, in another way, winter made Barrington sad. For you see, winter marked the time when all of the animal families got together in their cozy homes to celebrate Christmas. He could hop, and he was very furry. But as far as Barrington knew, he was the only bunny in the forest. When Christmas Eve finally came, Barrington did not feel like going home all by himself. So he decided that he would hop for a while in the clearing in the center of the forest. Hop, hop, hippity hop. Barrington made tracks in the fresh snow. Hop, hop, hippity hop. Then he cocked his head and looked back at the wonderful designs he had made. 
bunnies, he thought to himself, can hop. And they are very warm too because of how furry they are. But Barrington didn't really know whether or not this was true of all bunnies since he had never met another bunny. When it got too dark to see the tracks he was making, Barrington made up his mind to go home. On his way, however, he passed a large oak tree. High in the branches, there was a great deal of excited chattering going on. Barrington looked up. It was a squirrel family. What a marvelous time they seemed to be having. Hello up there, called Barrington. Hello down there, came the reply. Having a Christmas party, asked Barrington. Oh yes, answered the squirrels. It's Christmas Eve, everybody is having a Christmas party. May I come to your party? said Barrington softly. Are you a squirrel? No. What are you then? A bunny. A bunny? Yes. Well, how can you come to the party if you're a bunny? Bunnies can't climb trees. That's true, said Barrington thoughtfully, but I can hop and I'm very furry and warm. We're sorry, called the squirrels. We don't know anything about hopping and being furry, but we do know that in order to come to our house, you have to be able to climb trees. Oh, well, said Barrington. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, chattered the squirrels. And the unfortunate bunny hopped off toward his tiny house. It was beginning to snow when Barrington reached the river. Near the river bank was a wonderfully constructed house of sticks and mud. Inside, there was singing. It's the beavers, thought Barrington. Maybe they will let me come to their party. And so he knocked on the door. Who's out there? called a voice. Barrington Bunny. <laughs> he replied. There was a long pause and then a shiny beaver head broke the water. Hello, Barrington, said the beaver. May I come to your Christmas party, asked Barrington. The beaver thought for a while and then he said, I suppose so. Do you know how to swim? No, said Barrington, but I can hop and I am very furry and warm. Sorry, said the beaver. I don't know anything about hopping and being furry, but I do know that in order to come to our house, you have to be able to swim. Oh, well, Barrington muttered, his eyes filling with tears. I suppose that's true. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas called the beaver and he disappeared beneath the surface of the water. Even being as furry as he was, Barrington was beginning to get cold and the snow was falling so hard that his tiny bunny eyes could scarcely see what was ahead of him. He was almost home, however, when he heard the excited squeaking of field mice beneath the ground. It's a party, thought Barrington. And suddenly he blurted out through his tears. Hello, field mice, this is Barrington Bunny. May I come to your party? But the wind was howling so loudly and Barrington was sobbing so much that no one heard him. <clears throat> And when there was no response at all, Barrington just sat down in the snow and began to cry with all his might. Bunnies, he thought, aren't any good to anyone. What good is it to be furry and to be able to hop if you don't have any family on Christmas Eve? Barrington cried and cried. <clears throat> when he stopped crying, he began to bite on his bunny's foot but he did not move from where he was sitting in the snow. 
Suddenly, Barrington was aware that he was not alone. He looked up and strained his shiny eyes to see who was there. To his surprise, he saw a great silver wolf. The wolf was large and strong, and his eyes flashed fire. He was the most beautiful animal Barrington had ever seen. For a long time, the silver wolf didn't say anything at all. He just stood there and looked at Barrington with those terrible eyes. Then slowly and deliberately, the wolf spoke. Barrington, he asked in a gentle voice, why are you sitting in the snow? Because it's Christmas Eve, said Barrington, and I don't have any family and bunnies aren't any good to anyone. Bunnies are too good, said the wolf. Bunnies can hop and they are very warm. What good is that, Barrington sniffed. It is very good indeed, the wolf went on, because it is a gift that bunnies are given, a free gift with no strings attached. And every gift that is given to anyone is given for a reason. Someday you will see why it is good to hop and to be warm and furry. But it's Christmas, moaned Barry, and I'm all alone. I don't have any family at all. Of course you do, replied the great silver wolf. All of the animals in the forest are your family. And then the wolf disappeared. He simply wasn't there. Barrington had only blinked his eyes, and when he looked, the wolf is gone. All of the animals in the forest are my family, thought Barrington. It's good to be a bunny. Bunnies can hop. That's a gift. And then he said it again. A gift, a free gift. On into the night, Barrington worked. First, he found the best stick that he could. And that was difficult because of the snow. Then hop, hop, hippity hop to Beaver's house. He left the stick just outside the door with a note on it that read, here is a good stick for your house. It is a gift, a free gift, no strings attached. Signed, a member of your family. It is a good thing that I can hop he thought, because the snow was very deep. Then Barrington dug and dug. Soon he had gathered together enough dead leaves and grass to make the squirrel's nest warmer. Hop, hop, hippity hop. He laid the grass and leaves just under the large oak tree and attached this message. A gift, a free gift from a member of your family. It was late when Barrington started home, and what made things worse was that he knew a blizzard was beginning. Hop, hop, hippity hop. Soon poor Barrington was lost. The wind howled furiously, and it was very, very cold. It certainly is cold, he said out loud. It's a good thing I'm so furry. But if I don't find my way home pretty soon, even I might freeze. Squeak, squeak. And then he saw it. A baby field mouse lost in the snow. And the little mouse was crying. Hello, little mouse, Barrington called. Don't cry, I'll be right there. Hippity hop and Barrington was beside the tiny mouse. I'm lost, sobbed the little fellow. I'll never find my way home, and I know I'm going to freeze. You won't freeze, said Barrington. I'm a bunny, and bunnies are very furry and warm. You stay right where you are, and I'll cover you up. 
Barrington lay on top of the little mouse and hugged him tight. The tiny fellow felt himself surrounded by warm fur. He cried for a while, but soon snug and warm, he fell asleep. Barrington had only two thoughts that long, cold night. First he thought, it's good to be a bunny. Bunnies are very furry and warm. And then when he felt the heart of the tiny mouse beneath him reading, beating regularly, he thought, all of the animals in the forest are my family. Next morning, the field mice found their little boy asleep in the snow, warm and snug beneath the furry carcass of a dead bunny. Ooh. Their relief and excitement was so great that they didn't even think to question where the bunny had come from. And as for the beavers and the squirrels, they still wonder which member of their family left the little gifts for them that Christmas Eve. After the field mice had left, Barrington's frozen body simply lay in the snow. There was no sound except that of the howling wind. And no one anywhere in the forest noticed the great silver wolf who came to stand beside that brown lop-eared carcass. But the wolf did come. And he stood there without moving or saying a word all Christmas day until it was night. And then he disappeared into the forest. Okay. Thank you very much. It's great that uh, we were able to be with you today. And we feel like you guys are our family as well. So hope you have a uh, happy new year. Hope next year is better. It's got to be. Oh, Scott. It's wonderful to see everyone. Robert, how are you doing? Can you talk now, Robert? Robert? He's still muted. Yeah. Huh. Okay. It's great to see everyone. I'm doing good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Robert, do you have a favorite Christmas memory? What? Do you have a favorite Christmas memory that you can tell us about? <laughs> that too long. Too long. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, everyone. Hope you have a wonderful week. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Vicki's going to close us in prayer now. Thank you. Sorry. I was jumping the gun. Okay. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you and... Uh, we just worship you this day. Hopefully, we wor worship you and praise you every day of our life because of this gift, this precious gift that you've given us. 2,000 years ago, you gave us this most precious baby um, that knowing that he would give up his life for us. And there's no way to repay you for that except every day to try to live for you. So help us every day, Lord, to be your light, to be your joy, to be the peace that people around us need to feel, the confidence that we are yours and we, we have this gift in our hearts. Just help us to be bold in sharing that with others because there's so many needs and there's so many people who need you in their lives. So help us to be bold in our speech and, and have courage when we meet people for the first time that uh, when we realize maybe they don't have you in their hearts. So help us to be that witness that we need to be for you. Again, we thank you. Lord, we have a lot of people who have a lot of needs and a lot of it has to do with COVID. So I just pray today as most of us do often that this you would alleviate this, annihilate this virus, and take it from us. I just pray for healing for those who are really suffering, for those who have tested and don't have results yet, that they, the results would be negative. 
and those who have light cases that they, not, they would not get worse. And for those who are on the, the long haulers, Lord, that that would ease up and that there would eventually be an end to that, even though we really don't know how, what that's going to look like in a few months. So I just help us to trust you that, um, that you will take care of it and that you will take care of us. We know that you always provide. So just help us to trust in that. Um, uh, Travis Keith's um, co-worker um, has tested, uh, contracted the disease. So I just pray that you'd be with him. And uh, Nathan's niece was exposed to someone. And I just pray that that doesn't develop in her. Uh, Ray Snow's sister had tested positive. Um, the husband uh, of Laura's cousin, who is very, very sick, his name is Pete, and I know you know all about it, but I just pray that you will be with him, comfort them. I pray that you would keep this discomfort because that's what so many people deal with when they get so very sick, it's just so uncomfortable because they can't breathe. And we just pray for Joyce Adams as she's concerned about her daughter that had tested positive and I just pray that she's improving every day. Uh, Joyce's cousin, Emily, uh, who's had this uh, valve replacement, I just pray that her pain would subside. And we also praise you for her granddaughter's strep and the, uh, uh, that that would improve and that, that the COVID test was negative. That's, that's a praise we cannot forget. Uh, pray for Connie and Guy Smith. I don't know if Connie's home yet from the hospital, but I know she's been very sick. So I just pray for them that you would, um, that both of them would get a complete healing from this COVID. Uh, Diana's uh, nephew was exposed, uh, but has now te uh, tested negative. So we're very uh, thankful for that. So praise is about that, Lord. And her, Diana's high school friend, Katie, who passed away. Lord, this, I know this was a sad, sad time for her husband and daughters. And I just pray that you'll continue to comfort them. You'll, he, you'll heal their broken heart. That you will be there with them through this grief and comfort continually as they depend on you. We just pray for Faye Larson with her vocal cord problem, Lord, that that would just clear up in time. I know that paralysis takes a while to just clear up on its own, and I just, I know there's not much to do about that, but I just pray that she's improving, and uh, she has a lot to do for others, and I pray that you give her physical strength for that, even though she's not able to speak to well. Be with Joe in his job search. Um, Dale Cohen's friend uh, and co-worker Paula had tested positive. I just pray that She's doing well, and, and if she did get sick, that she's improving. We don't know exactly where that where she is right now in that illness. Um, and Diana's uh, neighbor's daughter, Molly, that has the bone marrow disease, that, that's a really painful thing to deal with. And I just pray that you would be with her and that the, the transplant for the bone marrow would come soon, that she would be eased, and that this would be a real healing thing in her body. And Lord, we just pray for COVID all over the country and the world that this new strand or the variants would, variant would um, not be as bad as they say, that the vaccine would be able to work properly with that also and do its thing. We pray for each of us as we're able to get the vaccine, Lord, that it would be very effective against the virus for each of us. And I pray that it comes soon not really soon enough because we we just need that we need that hope and we need that um basic basically just uh we just need it for to uh i guess for our hope but also to just help us to know that there's something to look forward to in the future that um maybe we can many of us can totally not contract that disease and, and live without that. We don't need that, Lord, in our lives and in our, with our health and our age and all that. We just don't need that. So I just pray that you'll continue to protect us and protect our family. And Lord, we just praise your holy name for this season and what it really means. Thank you for Jesus. 
Thank you for your love. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for the good help you've given many of us, most of us. Thank you for Wilshire and what they're doing to keep us all united and connected. Thank you for Dennis and Laura who lead us and keep us uh, connected too as a class. Thank you for the love that we have for each other and uh, help us to continue to just pray for each other, connect with each other, uh, because this group, this is a family, and I'm so grateful for it. I'm so glad that you took me in, and each of us have been taken into this group and loved on and loved through difficult times and losses, and many of you have lost parents and siblings and friends, and during the time that I've been here, even in some years, so I, I just I praise your name for this special group. And help us through this day, Lord, just focus on you, the goodness that you give us, and for who you are and what you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Happy New Year. Happy to see everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yes. Happy New Year. Thank you, Bert. I loved your song. It was so good. Yes. Fun. Yes. yes. So hey Bert, send me, send me the lyrics to that, will you? Okay. I'd love to have that. Yeah, send it on an email, maybe. Uh, you know, I can do, what I'll do is I'll send you um, I'll send everyone a um, a um, what do you Link? call it? MP3 Link? MP3 of it. Great. Okay. Oh, that'd be great. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think we have everybody's email, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that this week. Great. That's Thank great. you. Love you guys. That song for you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have a wonderful New Year.